My name is Mena Hadders Algra, and I'm an Emeritus Professor of Developmental Neurology at University Medical Center in Groningen. I will summarize my paper on a putative neural substrate of the early signs of autism spectrum disorder. Autism spectrum disorder, in short, autism, is an umbrella term describing a group of neurodevelopmental disorders that are characterized by impaired social communication, restricted and repetitive motor behavior, and atypical responses to sensory information. A recent meta-analysis of Van Hoff and colleagues demonstrated that the average age at a diagnosis of autism is 43 months, and that is, as Snoopy tells us, too late. And why is that? What do we know about the early signs of autism? We know about the early signs of autism from infants at high familiar risk of autism. And these studies taught us that after the age of six months, infants show impaired social communication. That is, they show lower rates of social behavior, for instance, gazing at an adult's face, joint attention, or responding to the own name. And the lower rates of social behavior are often due to regression. From six months onwards, the infants show also signs of altered sensory processing, that is, they show hyper or hypo responsiveness. From the same age onwards, from six months, they also have an altered motor development. That means that they have a slightly slower motor development, but so slightly that usually their motor development falls within the typical range. In addition, the repetitive ritualistic movements emerge. From neuropathological and neuroimaging studies in adults and adolescents, we know that individuals with autism have widespread alterations in the so-called social brain. That is, they have alterations in the association areas, in the frontal, temporal and parietal cortex, in the cerebellum, the amygdala and the brainstem. And the most prominent changes are found in the association areas, in the cortex and in the cerebellum. Recent evidence also suggests that individuals with autism have an altered glutamatergic gabapergic balance. And what do we know about the infant brain in autism? Whether children with autism have an impaired brain already at birth, we don't know. The evidence is conflicting. But we do know that in infants between six weeks and six months, that there is altered connectivity in the frontal, temporal and parietal areas and in the cerebellum. In addition, neuropathological studies indicated that the cortical subplate develops in a different way. What is the cortical subplate? Therefore, we move to the diagram on the right side of the slide. This is a cross-section of the cortex of a fetus of 24 weeks of gestation. At the bottom, we see the ventricles. At the top, the surface of the cortex. Neurons are generated near the ventricles and they migrate to finally the cortical plate, that's where we, as adults, have our cortical neurons. But the first generation of neurons do not move to the cortical plate. They stop in the layer below the cortical plate, hence the name cortical subplate. And this cortical subplate plays an important role in human brain development. In addition, it has 
the fetal cortical activity. So is responsible also mediates fetal behavior. From the third trimester of gestation, the cortical subplate decreases, and next generations of neurons pass through the decreasing cortical subplate to populate the cortical plate. So from the third trimester of gestation, we see a decreasing cortical subplate and an increasing cortical plate. And this process of a transition from subplate to cortical plate is completed in the primary motor, sensory and visual areas around the age of three months postern, but in the cortical association areas first around the age of 12 months postern. Not all neurons disappear, all neurons of the cortical subplate. The gyral white matter in the stitial neurons remain some of them. And we know that in individuals with autism, there is an excess of these white matter interstitial neurons. And these neurons may play a pathophysiological role in the development of the impairments of autism, as these interstitial neurons play a role in finding the optimal balance between the excitatory glutamatergic and the inhibitory GABAergic activity. But actually, this is not the main point of the present paper. The main point of the present paper is that the disappearance of the brain structures, the temporary brain structures, coincides with the emergence of these signs of autism. In table form, it looks like this. I just told you that the cortical subplate disappears in the primary motor, sensory and visual areas around the age of three months. And this is exactly the age at which atypical general movements and or the absence of fidgety movements get a high predictive value for cerebral palsy. In a similar way, it is conceivable that the disappearance of the cortical subplate in the cortical association areas and the disappearance of the so-called external granulator in the cerebellum around the age of 12 months makes that the signs of autism emerge, that is, the reduced social communication and the altered sensory and motor development. In a diagram, it looks like this. In the upper three bars, we see the emergence of these signs of autism, the altered social communication, motor development and sensory processing, signs emerging from six months onwards, and the lower two bars illustrate the development of the temporary structures in the brain, the subplate in the frontal, temporal and parietal cortex, and the cerebellar external granular layer. They first grow and gradually disappear. So, the idea, the hypothesis of this paper is that the disappearance of the temporary structures in the frontal, temporal and parietal cortex and in the cerebellum allow for expression of the signs of autism by the permanent neural networks. And so that could explain that the specific signs of autism emerge between 6 and 12 months of age and that parental questionnaires and interviews get predictive value from 12 months onwards. Thank you for your attention.